Hello there guys, welcome back to Unis Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today. Um, well, not too long left, I guess, until I can get back to the normal setup, um, and start, you know, hopefully posting two videos a day, there's loads happening isn't there, there's loads happening, but I'm going to give my thoughts on it all, as today we've got two big stories um, that we'll get through, one on Cole Palmer and the other one on a certain striker. We'll get to that. Let's start off with Cole Palmer. Let's start off. Oh, yeah, and there's Man United news as well. Yeah, United signed the licked. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Let's talk about the big issues at our football club. Um, Cole Palmer. Brand new contract has been... Actually, no. No, no, no. That's a lie. That's not a brand new contract. A contract extension has been agreed and signed and triggered and um, it means that he has now signed on to 2033 which means that he's here for the next nine years and um, he's been given a salary increase as well which is deserved 100% deserved and um, this is going to I think definitely look good for a lot of people if someone is playing really well then there's an incentive, they get a pay rise, and boom. I think like for everyone that works in anything, right? You do well, you get rewarded at your job, you get a pay rise. See, the only difference is his pay rise is 80,000 a week to 120,000 a week. Normal pay rises are what? You could say, mate, what? Let, let, let's say someone's on 30k a year, well, it goes up to 30 and a half k a year. Congrats, you've made basically peanuts. But... He has basically had his salary increased by 50%. So, um, congrats, Cole Palmer. Definitely deserved. I think one a player like, like, like him or a player on his standard should be getting that sort of money easily. So, good luck to Cole Palmer for the rest of his deal. And I'm very happy for him. But it does bring in a little bit of a, um, a question mark. <sighs> Someone gets signed on a really long contract and they do well, they get a pay rise, but there's an extension and then they're still tied down for a serious amount of years. So what's the point of the long contract in the first place? Do you know what I mean? Because if someone's good enough and there's an option to, to extend a contract, then great, the contract becomes long. But if someone's not good, then you've tied them down to a seven year deal, for example, then who's going to come in and buy them? That's the one area where I think there needs to be some reflection. And we need to not tie players down for a stupid amount of years. Easily get someone down for a four-year contract, right? Five, max, right? And if they play really well and they deserve it, cool, fantastic. Give them a contract extension. They, the, 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 the amount of years left on the contract can increase to six or even seven, right? But if they're not, then I think they're easily, um, more easily discardable that way, if you want to call it that. So... That's my two cents on it. But Cole Palmer, without question, absolutely deserved. And I'm very happy for him. Now, there's a whole thing going on about Chelsea's transfer business, right? And I'm going to come to a certain striker in a minute. But it does seem like, and this is from the Premier League Chief Executive Richard Masters that was talking about the ongoing Chelsea investigation, that it does seem like, uh, well... His words, it's complicated where we have the club talking to us about things that happened under the previous ownership, it's deemed, right? And um, things are reaching a conclusion, and that's all he can really say at the moment. We do know the Man City investigation is going to be kicking off really soon, so I'm looking forward to that one. That's going to be the big elephant in the room, without question. 115 charges, I want to know where all that's going to go for sure. But when it comes to Chelsea, it does seem like the word on the street is that Chelsea could be getting a transfer ban, right? Now, I have to be honest here, right? We have to be open. We have to be clear. Is the really hectic carnage transfer activity that we're seeing from Chelsea at the moment because there is a transfer ban coming in? That could answer. But, personally, um, I still think it's unnecessary <laughs> to go for these amount of players. Um, and the direction we've been going in, which has just not really been a direction, really. It's just been absolutely all over the place. We have a squad the size of a flipping uh, flipping school, right? It's rammed. We need to get rid of a lot of players. We shouldn't be in that position in the first place, right? But 
If we can get what we need right now and then we get hit of a transfer ban, cool. By all means. Because one way or another, I think we have to be stopped. <laughs> I think we have to be banned. This is getting crazy. Um, but the rumor on the street is that we could end up with a transfer ban. And it seems like the transfer ban could be two windows, which is fine. One summer window, one January window. Happy days, no problem. We can deal with that. We can go a season without buying anyone, right? Um, so, look, let's see how that's all going to pan out. But, we still have business to do this summer. And this is where we get to the big elephant in the room. Because it seems like, according to Di Marzio, right? And Fabrizio has mentioned on this, but Fabrizio... Fabrizio has been all over the place lately, man. Let's be honest now. It's not the first, second, third or fourth time this window he's got something lopsided. And now we're seeing Gallagher fly back to London. Gallagher is actually headed back to London. Unbelievable. He's going to be training with the Chelsea under-21s. How did it get to this? How did it get to this? Unbelievable. But anyway... So that here we go was pointless, which is basically why it just seems like the here we go now has been absolutely, what's the word? It's been um, diluted. That's the word I'm looking for. It's been diluted, right? It's like you've taken the potency out of it. And now it's just one of those old things from the past that used to work, but doesn't work so well anymore. Could be that. Anyway, um... Gallagher looking like he's headed back to Chelsea, at least for the time being. We'll see if it's going to be revived with Atletico Madrid. But according to Di Marzio, Chelsea's coaching staff have given the OK for Victor Osimhen. Um, previously, Chelsea were only offering a loan of an option, but are now open to reactivating the loan with an obligation, plus offer Lukaku to complete the deal, which is brilliant. Chelsea are considering signing Osimhen permanently, possible exchange with Lukaku plus cash. I've said this from day one, and I'll stick to this, yeah? I'll stick to this. It's clear as day how easy this deal is to do. Especially when the other club want a player that we want to get rid of, and their manager is dying for him. This is such an easy deal to do. And some people are going to say, oh no, but what about his salary? Okay, cool. Fabrizio has said that Victor Osserman will not reduce his salary, not even one euro. I'm 100% sure he's 11 million euros net per season. All right, cool. Pay it to him. How about that? How's that? You know, and some people are going to say, oh, no, but you can't just do that. You can't just, you know, not negotiate. No, not negotiate, but there's ways around this. Pay him that. But if you don't perform, then we might deduct a little bit off you. Yeah? Or if we don't get this target or that target, then we might deduct a little bit off you. That's just, then it's on you. you got to perform. Simple as that. See if he agrees to that. Worst comes to worst, look, pay the geezer some. Pay the geezer his money. Why am I saying pay the geezer his money? If this was a normal transfer without anyone involved, I can understand the frustration. I can understand why Chelsea wouldn't just dive in. No problem. But we are literally getting Lukaku off of our books, who was on a 315k a week contract. It's very easy. Replace this geezer with this geezer. That's it. If, if it really came down to it, we're not losing. We're still the same. You were to give Victor Osterman 300k a week, right? And if we're, obviously, if we're involving taxes and all that and it's net, then fair enough, okay? But we're, we're coming close to that figure anyway. Get Lukaku off the books and put Osterman on. That's worst case scenario. We're technically not even losing. So this is why I say this is the easiest deal to do. But Chelsea want to... Seems like really, really, really take it down to the wire to get Osimhen to drop his demands. Now, look, I'm not against trying to save a little bit of money if we can still get the player. So cool. Go with it. But at the end of the day, and this is my most important aim here, right? This is my most important point. As long as we get Osimhen through the door, that's all I'm bothered about here. Do what you got to do. But make sure it doesn't mean that everything is abandoned or everything collapses. Don't. Do what you gotta do. If you can save a few bob, you can save a few bob. If you don't, you don't. Whatever it takes, but get Osimhen through the door and make sure he signs that contract and make sure he comes to Chelsea. Because at the end of the day, look, I gotta be honest. If we were to have a window where we get Osimhen in, Pedro Neto in, possibly even Jao Felix, right? I will take that. 
Thank you very much. Very, very much, right? That's much better than what we were thinking about getting before. I'll take that all day long. And then any players that have got to go will go. Cool. But I will take that. So let's wait and see. But Osimhen is a must because we need that striker, man. We need that striker. Can we for once go and get that striker that we absolutely need that will get us goals, that will get the turnovers here, that will be able to put the ball in the net, that will get us some points and we can start really thinking now. Just as we say that, it seems like we might have defensive issues, which is a problem, which is a thing that we didn't really have a problem with before. But now it seems like we might. But again, we'll see. We'll see how that goes into the new season. But overall, look, let's wait and see what happens. And I want to make a point to end the video. Yeah. To end the video, I have to say this. I have to say this. With the point that I made earlier before Osimhen about possible transfer ban. Richard Masters talking about things that might have occurred under the previous ownership and all of that. On here, right, on this crazy platform called X, I'm seeing Roman Abramovich slander, right? Can we be grateful for what Roman actually done for our football club? Can we, can we have that, right? We had a transfer ban under Roman once before. But everything that we've done as a football club, and you want to talk about his heart being in the right place, bloody hell, he did not really even give a damn about the business side of things. He just wanted to win. Which goes in line with what we want as fans. We just want to win. We bloody did that. How many trophies was it? 23 trophies in 23 years or something like that. We basically was on a trophy a season. Average. Roman slander? Really? He made our football club, man. If we're being honest. Obviously, the club existed before that. Not a problem. We were winning here and there before him. Not a problem. But he put us on the map as a world beer. And left having won the Club World Cup with us. Let's have some respect for Roman Abramovich, yeah? Let's have some respect for the owner that he was for our football club. He left us debt free. He left us debt free. He didn't have to do that. He could have easily walked away and the club would have had to deal with the debt. He took the debt off the club. Before he left. He was forced to leave. Let's have some respect for Roman and what he'd done for the football club. And if anyone's going to say, oh, but dodgy dealings and whatnot, what, you think all the other football clubs are clean? No one's clean. And if you think there are clean clubs, you're naive, I'm afraid. Welcome to 2024. You've got some growing up to do. <laughs> Simple as that. Maybe you're young. You don't understand how the world works yet. Trust me, you'll get to an age where you might. And that's not to say that we've all figured it out. But the older you get, the wiser you get. And the more you realise what's going on. Man City, who have been as successful as they are, are on 115 charges. And in the middle of a crazy investigation, they're about to go on trial. You think they're clean? No one's clean. You think Barcelona are clean? We already know their story. You think Real Madrid are clean? No one's clean. No one's clean. So let's not act like all the other clubs are noble, right? And a bunch of angels and doing things absolutely wonderfully and perfectly. No, 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 no. Roman is one of many. But everything that he did that was good for the football club, let's not slander the greatest owner that we've ever had. And one of the greatest owners football's ever seen, yeah? Simple as that. Let me know your thoughts down below. And I want to end on this. Chelsea, go and get Victor Osimhen and we can start looking at the Premier League season seriously, yeah? Wonderful. Now, let me know your thoughts down below. Much appreciated. Um, hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Notification bell on. Much appreciated. And I will catch all of you on the next one tomorrow. Have a good one, people. See you a lot then. Take care and peace.